What's going on guys, No Guides here. Welcome back to another quick video. Happy New Year for those that are watching on New Year's Day. Don't forget I do have a Patreon service, patreon.com forward slash no guides. Link is down below in the description. Full money back guarantee if you don't get better after a month and you can start joining from the first uh, tomorrow. Well, going into the first um, phase of play, should I say, it's the final man defending. A situation you might find yourself in a lot. You have the ball, you end up losing the ball. Now listen, sometimes you're going to make a mistake. These things, it happens. The key thing is, is understanding what to do when you're here. Now most players in this situation, they would panic and you might be watching it thinking, oh, you know what I'm going to do, I'll run back. But truthfully speaking, a lot of players don't do that. They just go towards the ball carrier, especially when you're angry or when you're losing. The key thing is keeping your head in shape. The second thing is don't track the ball carrier. Now always say, always go to where the ball is going to be. But in this situation, if you run towards the ball carrier, it is a through ball, you're done. If you anticipate a through ball and he does a pass like this, you're done. If he does a normal pass or a through ball and you anticipate it incorrectly, you're done. So the safest thing for you to do here is to actually stand in this area. Let him create a one, let him have the ball, create a 1v1 situation, and then defend the angle towards goal. The key thing is when you're defending inside the box, is to push them away from goal. If, for example, I overcommitted over here and I went towards him, I would have got screwed. What I based it is I said to him, look, you know what? I'm gonna stand still, I'm gonna hold my ground. I basically moved forward a little bit here because I wanted to force him to go away. Again, going away from goal. If he makes the pass inwards, I can double up on him. But I position myself to force him down the wing. If you play football in real life, think about when your opponent cuts inside. You don't want him to cut, or especially someone like Robin. So, someone like Robin is cutting down the wing, you never want to let him shoot on his left. You always want to show him away towards goal. So you'll basically always overcommit on the outside, I suppose you can say, to push him towards the inside. It's the exact same principle over here. Push him out wide. Once he's wide, if he wants to take a shot from here, the chance of him scoring are like one in 10. Even like someone like Maradona or Zola in this situation, the chances are extremely low. Um, so you can just really just push him away. I go for the slide tackle because there was a good chance of me winning the ball. But had there not been a good chance, I would have just held the line. The key thing is neutralizing the danger in the first place by pushing him away from goal. So if he does take a shot, at least takes a shot from a very awkward angle. One thing I wanted to show you is in regards to slide tackles. Now, slide tackles are actually a very effective way of actually saving yourself because the reach of a slide tackle typically expands and extends much more than a stand tackle. A stand tackle would normally just veer around where it depends on the player's stats, obviously, um, but mainly it's terms, in terms of speed and height is the main thing. The faster you are, the faster you get to the ball, and obviously the longer you, the reach you have toward the player is generally is kind of the consensus. If you make a tackle here, you won't get it, but a slide tackle is a very important way of getting the ball. Now, doing it inside the box is very, very risky. But when I make a slide tackle, I always slide tackle into the space, never towards the ball. This is probably the best advice I'll ever give you. If you ever want to make a slide tackle, aim much more in front, way more in front than you think. Why? If you make a tackle towards Vardy, you bring him down here. If you miss a tackle, it's done. It's a penalty. Vardy can't do much from here anyway. Um, but in this event, if you want to take him out, the best thing to do is slide tackle this way. Well, why? Because if you slide tackle and your player is on the ground, if he walks into you, it's not a foul because the ball will reach. So the way the game registers a foul is if so obviously fouls are a bit dodgy this game, but generally speaking, how the game registers a foul is if the player is in the way and touches the ball before the opponent, then it's not a penalty. If your player, for example, this the red player touches the player first as opposed to the ball then it's a penalty. So if you just slide in front of them, they will basically walk into your tackle. Now obviously in real life, you wouldn't really do that, but in FIFA, it works very well. In fact, I'll slow it down to give you a bit of an example. Here, for example, I don't know what to do. Uh, Marquinhos, I know he's too slow. Even if I try to cut on the inside, I know he's too slow. So I switch players here. Look at my left analog stick. You see where I'm aiming my left analog stick? Not to the top right, I'm aiming basically like this. Then when I'm gonna make a slide tackle, Look at my left analog stick. I'm aiming basically down there. Do you see that? Look, I'm aiming to the bottom right. So what I'm saying to Mokieli is, okay, I want to make a slide tackle. The ball is away. Again, I don't know where he's going, but all I know is if I slide tackle in this radius over here, it stops him from going that way. And even if it doesn't work out, and it just acts as a barrier. Do you see that? So a lot of the time you've got a very, very high chance of getting the ball with the slide tackle. Try it. I would say don't do it in the box initially but doing it inside the box is very, very useful to use. Now let me show you one example of how you should actually defend, and you're gonna be very surprised from this example. Opponent has the ball, 
let him take a shot no danger now why do i let him do that it's because there's no danger here the chances of this player scoring from this angle honestly is relatively low now if for example he was if he had the ball now you're going to say oh this probably happens to me though but i can see the goals realistically speaking if he takes a touch going forward over here and then he makes a shot from over here yes i agree it's much more dangerous but you see at this position watch what i do my defender i don't actually go towards the ball carrier i realize okay he's making a pass in behind but that's not my worry my worry is the striker the biggest advice I can ever give you is if you're coming towards the inside the box and your opponent is on the edge of the box, always man mark the striker. But don't man mark the striker. If, he's, if the striker is down here, you wouldn't go and man mark him. You want to basically position your player where he's basically blocking the angle towards the goal for the shot carrier and he's also cutting out the passing lane. You want to do two of those things. So the best place for me to be standing will be over here. That is the best way of defending it because once you move your player in this position like so where Atal is, the situation is very much neutralized. If he does want to take a shot towards goal, realistically the shot has to go around this plane. You can see even someone like Atal with that small body frame and player model, the ball has to still go around Atal. So number one, I block the goal. The second phase is if he wants to pass the ball to Adama Traore, um, I can very simply just intercept or tackle the ball in that situation or I think that's Talisco, wherever that, wherever that is. But the most important thing is I'm positioned to defend both. Do you see that? So I'm basically forcing him to make a shot outside the box. That is how you want to actually defend. It's very much overlooked, but when you're defending, there are some things to bear in mind when you're defending inside the box. Too many times I see opponents rushing towards this player over here. No, go ahead, neutralize the danger by either A, going to where, to where I would say the shot is going to take place, and B, more importantly, where the strike is going to be, and that way you kind of neutralize two aspects of defensive fate or two aspects of your opponent shooting and you're basically killing two birds with one stone. Now the final example I wanted to show you is how to defend a rebound from a corner. I never score and concede rebounds in corners. First thing I do is move my goalkeeper out. He punches the ball away. But the most important thing is I watch my player's defensive position. When I'm defending this situation, I'm blocking the shot towards goal. I'm not actually getting the ball. I'm letting him come towards me. Now why this is very, very important for most of you guys that are watching this video is not everyone is doing this. I would say only 2% of players are actually doing this in their game. Let's say for example, I can move the goalkeeper with the right analog stick, very, very simple from a corner, just like I can move the goalkeeper out. You can see that over here, right analog stick down, move him out. So now the goalkeeper is in a good position to punch it away. Now people always say to me, well, no, I always concede rebounds. Yes, the goalkeeper parries it away, but then what happens then? My opponent gets the ball and he scores a rebound. Once the ball goes over here and you miss his header, with your defender, your ideology, in my opinion, should be this. You stand in front of him and you block the angle towards goal. You block his shot. That's all you have to do. You don't have to run towards him. You just block the shot. You meet him halfway. Here he's taking the touch. And as you can see, the only reason why I went for the ball here is because there's a good chance for me to win the ball. But watch, I don't press X on the controller. I don't tackle the ball in midair. I just walk into the area. You see that? I'm I know that he's obviously got to take a touch here, but I'm basically walking into the ball and almost protecting the area towards goal. I'm not actually going for the ball. I'm basically defending that zone first. And even my opponent gets the ball back here. Watch, I don't go out running towards him. By him standing over here, if he shoots, my player is blocking him. If I move down now, again, if I go towards him, there's no point. All I've got to do here is go like this. Defend the angle towards goal. That way, if he tries to take shots, he's going to hit my player. And as you can see over here, when the ball goes around like this, watch, I'm not going towards him. I'm standing off. I'm saying, you know what? Take a shot. What's the chance of you scoring here with all those plays in the way? With the AI interceptions this year, it's so hard for your opponent to get through. Use the running jockey. And look here, I only go forward once there's a chance for me to win the ball, once he does a skill move, because I know he's got nowhere to go because one of the centers in front of him. But again, you see how I go down. I'm not defending like this. I'm defending like this, curving my run, neutralize the danger. Again, covering the angle towards goal. And one final example I want to show you over here. This time I made the slide tackle with my Renato Sanchez. I miss. Um, I have no choice here to bring out my center backs because my CDMs are not in sight. Again, you see how I protect the ball, protect the ball, protect the goal, should I say. And I push him away. Now, it ended up being a corner here. Now, it looks like I've done nothing here. 
Right, but what I've been doing is, is you might think it's inadvertently doing so, but it's not. I'm actually pushing my opponent away from goal. He takes a touch like this, I deliberately commit behind him, and I want him to either make a pass like this or go down the wing. I don't want him to go forward. Once he gets the ball over here, I deliberately, with Marquinhos, watch what happens here. I commit upwards. Why? It's because if he goes this way, he's through on goal. I commit upwards, so I force him to do a drag back and to pass the ball to this player here. So what I'm doing again is, again, the same principle. I'm pushing him out wide. He doesn't realize this, but I'm pushing him wide. Then even with Mar Marquinhos here, when he does that, when he does that, um, that kind of that, the half drag back, should I say, or the 90 degree drag back. Watch your Marquinhos. You see, I don't run towards the ball, cavity and intercept the ball. I'm running like this. Again, same thing. I'm get, my opponent gets the ball, I want to push him out wide. The exact same thing. Then once I've got the ball over here, and I watch with my other center back. You see, I don't select my center back because I don't need to use him. If I use my center back and try to get the ball and he goes past me, then he can go through and then he can shoot. But just by standing there, and blocking the angle towards goal. If he shoots, what's the chance of him scoring? Is very, very low. Then once he gets around towards the goal area, then you can go ahead and intercept. But the key thing is pushing him away from goal. And that's all it is. To defend inside the box, all you need to do is you need to cover the angle towards goal. I deliberately chose these clips because I made mistakes in the beginning. You can see in all these clips, I made some form of mistake, but the key thing is how I recover. Watch with my centre back how I don't go towards the ball carrier, I occupy the danger area, the cutback, because that's where he wants to go. I occupy the danger area, the cross situation. Once I'm over here, I block out the angle. The chances, if he if he was going to take a shot there, I saw he was going to make a pass up. If he was going to take a shot there, I would have slid or I would have cut, cut that angle out over there. My goalkeeper would have got the near post. If he shoots and he scores, you just have to hold your hands up and say good goal, because the chance of him scoring there is very, very low. But you can see I defend the angle and I defend the cutback because if he shoots from there, let him. Why do I care? I'm more worried about Ronaldo, R9 over here, him getting the ball, doing a first time big shot and him scoring. So the main danger area for me is to cut out that cutback. Then I cut out the cutback and I watch him work early. All I do is I switch that play and again, I'm covering the angle towards goal. You see that? What I'm basically doing is I'm blocking. This is the key with defending. You don't need to run towards your opponent. Just block the angle out towards goal. Best advice I can give you is go into a game. Just literally go into a game. Just practice standing in front of the goal. That's it. Neutralizing the danger and you'll see how much of a difference it will make when you're defending. And anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Happy New Year. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you in another. I'll probably catch you tomorrow probably with a video uh, for Form H video if I get it done on time. But thanks for watching boys. Take it easy and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.